to Legends of Change on NBC One. This is the program that brings you gripping and motivating stories from people that remain role models even during the time of the pandemic. Speaking of COVID-19, we hope that you're keeping safe and staying sanitized. I'm your host, Matthew Maps Kapofi. Stay tuned. After three years of being unemployed, Festus decided to help himself and everyone else around him. Here is Festus, and this is his story. C. Lewis once said, Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary life. Festus Malakia is one individual who can attest to this quote. I was actually born in Nyati. It's a, it's a village in Shikota region. I'm not sure if you are away. But it's just 10 kilometers from Obsia, near Witu and Dangwa. That's where I was born. And uh, yeah, um, my parents were like in Vindu, actually. Like, uh, so I was always between Vindu and the north somehow. But after completing high school, I have to come back to, uh, I have to come to Vindu now for tertiary education and all that. So actually that's how I found myself in Vindu. Okay. okay, after high school, actually I decided to take like a gap year. So I didn't go to, uh, to school. Uh, when I completed high school, so I had to take a gap year. And uh, yeah, I was in Vinduk, I was staying with one of my brothers. So since like we don't have like a house or, or like a family home here, yeah, I was just staying with my, with my siblings. Uh, I used to stay with my brother, then one of my sisters. So I was just like uh, between family member like that until I completed uh, university basically. Then yeah, that's... Uh, when I started staying on my own, and uh, yeah, here yeah, I am still staying on my own. And, yeah. After high school, since I took a gap year, obviously I, I, I was part of the unemployment pool, and uh, that's how it started. But. Uh, because first of all, I, I really never wanted to go to school, I will be honest, because I was more just into trying to make money for myself because this is something that I started doing in high school. During my high school years, I was always the guy selling the knickknacks, selling the lollipops. So basically that's how it started. But uh, obviously when I started studying, I, I was a student for like three years. And after that, I was like in, unemployed for like a year. Then I got a job, I, I worked for, for, for the bank, I, I was in working for NetBank for I think three years until now I left now to pursue entrepreneurship full time. So that's uh, basically that's how it how it started. And yeah, I experienced unemployment for around about two to three years. I think if I have to put it all together, yes. I was applying for jobs, and uh, but. I wasn't just applying for a job because really I have been passionate about entrepreneurship ever since. I was always a guy trying to get something. Even during when I was unemployed, I always tried to... I was like working at a certain car wash, not really work, but I just wanted to check out. It was more of my internship kind of because I wanted to see, okay, if I can learn this thing, I can actually make my own car wash. That was my whole thinking back then. So I used to go to this car wash, uh, work some time there and also started, I also drove like a taxi for a couple of months. So I was just really trying to do anything to survive. As the unemployment rate keeps rising in the country, the Namibian youth need more people like Malakia to start fending for themselves. I was always this guy that was uh, into social initiatives and it started back in high school and uh, obviously with the high unemployment rate among the youth in Namibia so after when I came from the bank I was now full-time entrepreneurship but things were not as easy to understand because entrepreneurship is not as easy I found myself like I'm starting all over again so but yet again I started working on my business consulting firm uh, then it started picking up, then I can see, okay, if I can actually do something for myself, why don't I come up with an initiative that can empower other youth 
to also maybe pursue entrepreneurship or just to do something for themselves, pursue self-employment, because at the end of the day, no matter how educated we are, the market won't absorb anything. I, I came from that point like, okay, we do have high rate unemployment in the country, but there's nothing really happening. There are, they are very, like, there are very few uh, programs that are dealing with this uh, unemployment issue. And I decided, no, why don't I come up with a program that do... The first uh, thinking was that I come up with an initiative where we come together as young people, we put together our resources, and then we can start businesses. But I found out that, no, this is not going to be easy because uh, it's easier to say things, but when it comes to action, it's not really everyone who's bringing the action. So I started now with this program, just started with a, a small group, like the first meeting, I think only like maybe six people that showed up. Then I shared with them my journey, how I started doing entrepreneurship and just how I, I can help them also start with whatever little thing that they want to do. That's how this whole initiative started basically. that I, I came up with, it's, uh, it's called Unique Empowerment and Employment Initiative Foundation. As you can see, there's a, a unique empowerment also, so there's an em employment creation part of it. I was just thinking, what are the strategies? Because I, I used to do a lot of reading and I was just reading about uh, entrepreneurship, how can people come up with jobs? That's how it, it started, basically. So I, I decided, okay, why don't I come up with something or rather, I started asking myself, what other ways can we create em employment? Or what can I play my part as a citizen just to make the government halfway? So that's how it started that, okay, one way to beat employment is through entrepreneurship because I created a job for myself just by doing enterprising here and there. So if I can do it, so other young people. So that's how it started. Then obviously, I, I'm a youth advocate. I'm, I'm a, a youth advocate for youth participation in the mainstream economy. So I started, no, if I'm going to target youth because these are the people that I can relate to, they can also relate to, I, I feel like I understand the problem they are going through. That's how it all started. Uh, then the target market was the youth, although now we do also just look at other entrepreneurs. I don't need to be any youth whatsoever, but the youth is the, the, the main beneficiary, basically, for, of our programs. We started 2018, 2018, but uh, th things started picking up 2019. 2019, that's really when uh, things started picking up, even when we put out a call, like, no, we have this uh, entrepreneurship seminar, or we are going to have this training. People started showing up in numbers compared now to 2018, and uh, obviously through 2019, I joined some fellowship programs. I attended a couple of them. Like one was, uh, 2018 I attended one which was uh, organized by the Conrad Adnawa Steve Tung. It's a youth uh, development program, basically more of a leadership program. And uh, yeah, that's when really, when I started attending these seminars and this uh, fellowship, my, also my network started expanding, you know. People started, uh, okay, no, you do this and that. No, I think I do know people that can benefit from your program. And I started connecting with other organization and initiative. That's really how I have widened my networking and uh, things started picking up. We started helping them now in terms of advising them on how to, where to go to register business, how to do it, because this is already the thing that I was already doing as, as a business consultant. Like-minded individuals tend to find a way to come together and build better lives together. And that's exactly how Vincent became a core partner in the initiative. My name is Vincent Oyudo. I'm an land executive member and program coordinator for the Unique Empowerment Initiative Foundation. Uh, we met with first this uh, early 2019. Uh, we met here at the Dubox. We're both entrepreneurs. We're the first to be taken under the program for Dololo, who are the incubators and uh, provide the co-working space that we're operating from. 
I've uh, worked with Festus for the past two years now, and uh, working with Festus is uh, a great experience. He's uh, very uh, passionate about uh, uh, empowering others, and uh, I got to join the foundation because I share a similar background. I volunteered for a number of uh, organizations, uh, one be it uh, Physical Active Youth, and uh, I've coordinated a number of events. Uh, through the initiative of I Inspire, I was one of the coordinating uh, members there. So that's how I met, got to meet Festus. The lady that you're going to meet uh, completed one of our inter uh, entrepreneurship program post COVID 19, which we held uh, in collaboration with uh, Conrad Foundation. With a, facilitated with us to provide the training in the uh, two main regions, which is Commerce and uh, Rongo, which were highly affected by COVID-19. So we came up with the program and she's one of the ones that completed successfully. So we're going to visit her and uh, check up on her progress so far as to how she continued on post our program with her. And uh, I've heard she has uh, plans of expanding, so it seems like business is picking up for her. Just like any other new business owner, one never knows what may come your way. Hileni Davids needed the unique empowerment and the Employment Initiative Foundation to help her. So with now the expansion, so how are you going to do it? Are you going to employ more people? Uh, I'm thinking of employing two more people mm -hmm. that, uh, that will go study the other restaurant that I'm opening. Okay, okay. Mm. And uh, how, how, in terms of finance, uh, how are you going to finance those operations? Did you get a loan or is it from your savings? It's from my savings. From your savings, eh? Okay, okay. And, and what other options? Have you tried uh, looking into delivery services? Delivery, no. Not, not as of, not as not, of yet. Not yet. Okay. I'm Eleni David, the founder of Ndeshi's Kitchen. Uh, my business before I, missed, I met Mr. Malakia, it was, uh, it was bad. Uh, it was slow and because uh, I started off just with, a, with one chicken, selling street by street. A friend of mine invited me to, to meet him. We had a workshop, so uh, we were taught how to budget. How, I didn't know that, how to budget, how to save. And it really helped me. After the, the training, I, I decided, I spoke to my sister, I decided, well, let's, because we, we saved, we had some little money we saved, so we decided now to go rent a place. And uh, we started, so we are now growing, so we are planning now to open up something, another place, uh, it will be in Havana. Hopefully things will work out. The work here is uh, special because uh, I have a high passion for empowering others and as an entrepreneur and uh, with a crisis of high unemployment I was also at one point in the same predicament so I did not know where to go and where to find help so through my networks and getting out there I, I got to get where, where I am and uh, uh, the work here is special because I feel we are giving back to the community and uh, bringing an impact and uh, that's how and that's how I feel it. Uh, my advice to the youth, you don't need to start with a lot of money. You start little. And uh, if you need some advice, you can. I can give you Mr. Malakia's number to get help. Um, I, I'm also planning to invest in the youth, like in my location. If you want to come up with a small business, perhaps I could help with the little that I have. My last word is just to say, like, if you really have, if you want to do something, th there's no right time to start. You just need to start and you, and you continue, you keep on learning as you go. Because even when I started, I wasn't an expert or I don't have a PhD in this and that, but I just started. But when I started doing what I, what I was doing, I started learning along the journey. So I really just want to tell, especially the youth that they, like, so your this your life is your own responsibility and uh, really with everything everything happening right now if you don't start now it's going to be late thank you to festus and the team for being an inspiration and helping fellow young people to help themselves we can never salute you enough and if you know of any other legends around you or in your community 
please feel free to contact us on our Facebook page, Legends of Change. And during this time of the pandemic, we say, don't give to gain, but give to inspire others to give. In our helping segment today, what we love on Legends of Change the most is when people who feature on the show continue to go out and give back. Remember Julia Nambinga from Lago Medical Suppliers? Well, the company donated more than 100 packs of sanitary pads to schoolgirls at Mountain View High School in Okahanja Park. They also gave an interactive and informative talk on menstruation and how boys can participate in the destigmatization of period-related issues. The team is excited to continue their partnership with At Keep a Girl in SCH2 Namibia and expand their social outreach sector. Well, we say continue the good work in the spirit of giving. If you would like to contribute or share similar stories of giving, please call or email our producer Helena at 0811-486-444 or email hamunyela at nbc.na. Legends of Change.